Welcome to In The Workshop, a diabolical model steam engine part 9. Adjusting the connecting rod brasses and making the crosshead fit in the correct position. Turning some spacers for the crosshead guides and fitting them in place. This is the position of the crosshead from the last episode. Why is this so? Well, it's actually quite simple. I had a crisis of confidence and wondered if perhaps I had drilled the hole incorrectly in the piston rod, but this, as you can see, is not the case. The problem which I actually overlooked is the crosshead itself. I forgot that the underside of the crosshead is mainly made from soft solder. And just in case some viewers may doubt what I'm saying, here is the proof. This is the underside of the crosshead, showing an excess of soft solder where there should really not be any. I'd like to call a halt to the proceedings while I explain that this is a sympathetic restoration of a diabolical steam engine. And when it's finished, it's still going to be a diabolical steam engine, except with one vital difference. When I finish with it, it will work. I'm going to have a look at the fit of the crosshead onto the piston rod shortly and rectify the problem. First of all, though, I do need to adjust the bearings. I put the word in inverted commas because I really am going to brutalise the bearings to make them actually fit the pins onto which they go. What I need to do now is remove the connecting rod. I'm getting rid of the small rusty bolts at the crosshead end and removing the brass cheese head bolts from the big end. I'm not going to reuse these bolts, they really are awful. I've bought some 5BA dome head bolts, which will be far better for the job. This is the crank pin, and it's really not in too bad condition. And thankfully, I do not need to do anything with it. Take a look at this though, it's the big end brass, and in the past, someone has reprofiled the outer part of it, the bit that fits on the end of it, because the hole is not round. Whenever you reprofile a big end brass to make it fit better, it's a good idea to clean up both sides and then, if necessary, re ream the hole in the centre. I'm using a piece of emery cloth wrapped around a steel rule on the bench. Why around a steel rule? Well, that's to keep it flat. And I'm actually removing quite a lot of material from the end of the connecting rod. No measurements have been taken, I'm doing this as usual by eye. This is followed by cleaning up the end cap on the piece of emery, but not removing much material. What I'm doing here is threading the connecting rod using a 5BA tap. I would like all the fixings on this engine to be 5BA. With the exception of the main bearing fixings, which are 4BA. Once I'd threaded the holes 5BA, it's a simple job to screw in some dome head bolts. Here I'm doing the bottom one. This, in my opinion, does look quite a lot better. And over time, once these bolts tarnish, they should fit in with the rest of the engine quite well. There is a major problem with the guide bars. Even though I soldered the parts back in the correct position to the motion bracket, the guide bars stick up a little bit. The accuracy of this engine really has to be seen to be believed. Truly, it is a diabolical thing. The good news is, though, I've fixed the problem with the crosshead not sitting level. Look at the end of the piston rod. I've very carefully bent it slightly. And with a piece of wood underneath to support it, I'm tapping in the taper pin. Because the end of the piston rod is now bent, it's actually a better fit in the crosshead to start with. And fitting the taper pin puts the piston rod and the crosshead at some tension with each other, keeping it stable. Withdrawing the piston rod through the piston rod gland is not a problem because the clearance in there is excessive and it accommodates a slight bend on the end with ease. For the gland packing, I have used three silicone rubber o rings and I've used three smaller steam grade silicone rubber o rings on the valve rod, so I don't think they're going to leak. This is a way of levelling up the crosshead guide bars. A couple of random washers really does look awful. I'm using the washers to find out the thickness that I need, then I'm going to duplicate the thickness with a couple of brass washers that I will turn on the lathe. 
In this part of the clip, I'm removing the bolt to withdraw the washers. The 5BA bolt felt quite tight in the hole, so I'm re-threading this using a 5BA tap. I'll speed up this bit, you don't need to see this again. Using my micrometer, I took a measurement of one of the uprights on the support for the end of the guide bars. But I actually made a mistake here, because the guide bar supports are not round. It's over to my Boxford lathe, with a piece of scrap brass in the chuck. I've just faced across the front, and now I'm turning it to the correct diameter. What I didn't know at this stage was the correct diameter, well, there isn't a correct diameter, because those uprights are hand filed. And the measurement that I took with the micrometer was on a thinner bit, but never mind, I think this is the least of my worries. I centre drilled the end of the piece of brass and then drilled a clearance size for 5BA all the way through it. And here I'm reusing the drill bit to support the part while the parting tool does its stuff. In no time at all I had two washers, but as you can see they are slightly lesser diameter than the uprights because both of these uprights are not the same and they're hand filed, but they look okay, in a diabolical sort of a way. A good match, I think, for the rest of the parts in this sympathetic restoration. Now, at least the guide bars are more or less level, and when I move the piston rod back and forth, it actually feels surprisingly good. Time now to thread the outermost bearing half of the small end using a 5BA tap. Before any viewers write in to tell me, yes, I do know that I put it in upside down, I will correct this in the fullness of time. I was so surprised that this component fitted in both directions, I thought I'd leave it this way for a while. This clip shows what the crosshead looked like before I made the modifications, but as you can see, at least in this clip, the small end brass is fitted the right way around. Mechanically, the engine is a lot better, and I really don't think it's that far away from running. I can't wait. I'm really trying to hide the excitement. That's it for this episode. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.